Hi, I'm Brian McLaughlin and this is Deep Thought Balloon, little videos about comic stories, pop culture, and other stuff. Let's talk about gesture drawing for writers. First, I should explain what regular gesture drawings are. Gesture drawing is when artists make a quick sketch of a person to capture their pose or motion without worrying about the details. If you're working with a model, they strike a series of poses that usually don't last longer than a minute. My art teachers used to talk about finding the line of the pose, which is great, but I also like to look for the shape of it. If you can't get a model, you can go to a cafe on a street corner and try to draw people who are waiting to cross the street. You might be lucky to get 30 seconds to capture a pose. If you sit on the upper level of a mall, you can draw the shoppers below you, and if you go to the food court, you can often catch some seated poses that are longer as well. These are great reference if you want to find some natural poses for your characters later on. One reason we do gestures is to loosen up if your figures look stiff or overly posed, especially if you're used to using photo reference and you're trying to draw a character who's acting or reacting to something. We also do it to learn cartooning. In his book on the subject, Ivan Brunetti suggests drawing an object in 3 to 4 minutes, then 2 minutes, then 1 minute, then 30 seconds, then 15, then 5. What is the essential part of that thing? How little can you draw and still communicate car or house? Then when you go to draw them in your comics, you'll know how to strip them down and what's set dressing. Cartoonist Sam Henderson says drawing the shoelaces isn't going to make the gag funnier. Maybe the story you're telling with your art needs more detail for impact, but maybe you can find a simpler way to draw it, especially because cartooning is a lot of drawing for the time it's consumed in. Why add to your hassle if it's not improving people's experience? I'm more trained as an artist than as a writer, and when I speak to my writer-trained friends, I'm always amazed that they haven't been told to do this exercise with writing. They're familiar with microfiction and short poems like haikus, but doing this exercise is not something they usually practice. To do a written gesture, you look at a person and try to capture their essence in a minute. Just like with a gesture drawing, sit at a cafe and write a sentence or two about passerbys. Or like life drawing, just try to describe the pose, the way that somebody's standing or sitting. And you can use these verbal sketches later for reference or inspiration. The Ivan Brunetti thing's useful here too, because you can try to distill a character down to just one word. What sets them apart from the other characters in your book? Then you can use that word when they show up especially in a book with a big cast, it can help the reader subconsciously get a feel for them, even if they've forgotten their name. For instance, we could have an opportunistic character and pick the more poetic word pounce and have a character who pounces on other people's words, or pounces on a note dropped on the ground. Or have a naive character who loves adventure, you could pick the word hurl and have the hero hurl themselves into a room like they hurl themselves into battle. I do written gestures occasionally. At comic conventions, I sometimes draw caricatures of people and I offer written caricatures alongside my other options. It can be hard to find the right words to capture a person. It's easier to find a pencil line between them drawing a nose hilariously big and insultingly big than it is to find the societal line between schnoz, honker, and beak. I try to cushion the blow by including the person's best features and worst. When I sign books with writers, they lament that us artists get more attention for our sketches, but maybe there's some sort of verbal sketch they can do for the person. Not a caricature. But a word sketch. Artists often have a few things we've mastered sketching. Maybe you can come up with a stock bunch of phrases or couplets to drop in depending on your reader. Like if you've written a book about Greek mythology, ask them what their favorite Greek hero or villain is and then drop in an Athena rhyme or Medusa joke. It's like how a comedian knows if someone's going to say X they always have Y loaded as a response. They're quick on their feet but they also know what people are going to say and have prepared responses for them. Spend an afternoon arming yourself with an arsenal of phrases to drop into people's books. When you get someone who has an obscure Greek hero that you work really hard on a rhyme for, they're going to be really excited that they unlock that secret message and bonding moment with the author, and the rest of the people will be happy with this cool little personalized message. So you can see that written gestures have practical application from distilling characters, inspiring your writing, giving you a catalog of prose to pick from, to signing books, to loosening up your writing. You could even start sharing them as tweets to engage your audience and other writers. However you use it, I hope you find the idea of written gestures useful to you. Good luck and keep thinking deep thought balloons.